today's business news, we have Don Ma here with us. Don, how's it going? I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? Doing pretty well. What do you have for us today, sir? All right, let me start off with the flooding in Central Europe. Uh, it's a deadly flood, forced factories, retailers to shut down across Central Europe. Tens of thousands of people have been evacuated. Uh, this is as towns from Poland to Romania underwater. One example here, a chemical plant partially owned by a Chinese company, which has closed down in the Czech Republic. A spokesperson for the company, uh, Borsod Chem, confirmed the shutdown. A Czech business group said that companies not directly hit with flooding still had to stop production because of issues transporting materials by rail. Uh, next, this week, central banks are holding meetings on monetary policy. The U.S. Federal Reserve will kick off the week with the two-day meeting starting tomorrow. It's going to be joined by central banks around the world. Uh, that's from Brazil, England, and Norway, South Africa, Japan. Now, in the U.S., traders are predicting a quarter-point cut. The same is expected in South Africa, Brazil. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it is expected to see a rate hike. Uh, from those countries. Now, rates in the UK and Norway are expected to hold steady. Japan also expected to see a rate hold, but a rate increase is predicted for later in the year for the country. Now, relief for many viewers as Disney and DirecTV have ended their weeks-long dispute. The two sides came to an agreement over the weekend. More than 11 million DirecTV subscribers lost access to Disney stations during a distribution dispute that began September 1st. On Saturday, the company said that a new distribution deal offering more options for customers, that's including like packages that include Disney Plus and Hulu. Uh, customers now also have access to ABC and FX. DirecTV will also be able to distribute ESPN streaming service once it debuts uh, at no extra cost to its customers. And over 100 striking Samsung workers were detained by police in India today. Officials said they were held for planning a march without permission, which was needed uh, since there are schools, colleges, and hospitals in the area. It marks an escalation of a strike at a Samsung home appliance plant near Chennai in southern India. More than 1,000 employees have boycotted work for a week. They want higher wages, better working hours, and recognition of a union backed by influential labor group, the Center of Indian Trade Unions. Samsung isn't keen to recognize any union backed by a national labor group and talks have not yet led to any agreement. The move has disrupted production that contributes roughly a third of Samsung's annual India revenue of $12 billion. Next, uh, adding pumps to cut down on wait times. Costco CEO indicated that the company tried to speed up the process of fueling up during a recent earnings call, he said gas expansion was one of the initiatives the warehouse is working on. And in the meantime, drivers can try to navigate long lines with Costco's app, which sometimes shares real-time data on gas wait times. Lines are also typically shorter during the middle of the week and during the mid-morning when many people are working. Some Costco gas stations also stay open a bit later than the warehouse. Also, uh, Chinese-owned video app TikTok fighting for its life. Oral arguments kicked off today as the company challenges a potential ban in the U.S. Take a look. The TikTok court hearings have begun. The popular short video app is fighting to remain in the U.S. after the government passed a law to potentially ban it. A three-judge panel of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia heard oral arguments Monday. That same data is extremely valuable to a foreign adversary trying to compromise the security of the United States, knowing how what Americans' you know, patterns are, who their contacts are, where they go, who they interact with. Attorney Daniel Tenney, arguing on behalf of the U.S. government, says TikTok is a threat to national security. TikTok is owned by Chinese firm ByteDance, which, under Chinese law, must obey the Chinese Communist Party. Tenney argues the Chinese regime can use the app to collect private data, then use it to manipulate Americans. If we're trying to approach an American to try to have them be an intelligence asset, or if it was trying to figure out how to cater its messages to, to get um, messages supportive of, of Chinese national security. TikTok lawyer Andrew Pincus argues a ban violates the First Amendment, the right to free speech. He says the threat to the First Amendment outweighs national security risks. For the first time in history, Congress has 
expressly targeted a specific U.S. speaker, banning its speech and the speech of 170 million Americans. The law is subject to strict scrutiny, and the government bears the burden of proving its constitutionality. A lot of government evidence against TikTok is classified. The government argues publicizing them would cause grave damage to national security. Now, despite extreme heat putting extreme pressure on the power grid this summer, operators were able to avoid rolling blackouts. So in states like, uh, states like California and Texas, the grid was supposed to buy new power resources or power sources from renewable energy and battery storage. The other parts of the country are still at risk, though. One operator said that this summer, his organization was running on the smallest ever cushion of electricity reserves. He provides power from the Texas Panhandle to North Dakota. Grid operators are also warning that the next five years may be difficult. There, there will be an increasing need to transfer electricity between regions as new wind and solar farms replace conventional power plants. Now, Tesla's expansion of its supercharger network has slowed despite receiving government funding. So analytics firm EV Adoption reports that the number of supercharger ports open in May through August fell nearly 30 percent from the same period last year. This comes after mass layoffs in April when many on Tesla's supercharger team were cut. CEO Elon Musk said that Tesla would continue to build out the network just at a slower pace for new locations. The EV maker has been awarded nearly $40 million in public funding to build supercharging stations across the country. At the same time, Tesla is under pressure to expand access to its superchargers or its chargers at other EV brands. And now listen up. Apple's new AirPods going to hit the market this Friday, and there are four models for you to choose from. And, and the new AirPod 4 will have active noise cancellation. Uh, it could be a, a worthy upgrade for you. Uh, the earbuds are $179. It's $50 more than the basic version. They come with additional features like wireless charging as well and a ringable case if you need to find it. Uh, so the big difference here between the pods, uh, the normal ones, and the pros are the ear tips. Uh, the, the regular ones are, are made uh, entirely of plastic, while the Pro AirPods have various silicon tips. So if hearing health uh, capabilities are a must, uh, only the Pros will be able to turn into hearing aids as well once that software is released. Now, LEGO is moving away from its unique calling card, or figurine rather, uh, the Danish toy company would make custom minifigures for some of its employees to use as business cards. And employees said they could choose from different facial expressions and add beards as well, or glasses, for example. But a spokesperson said this was using a lot of resources, especially since most people are connecting digitally. The mini Lego business card figures have become collectibles over the past years. Uh, some collectibles, uh, collectors rather, say a rare one could sell for as much as $1,000. Okay, so the Human Powered Speed Challenge is an event where innovation and human power meet to push the boundaries of speed. Athletes and engineers from around the world gathered in Nevada last week for the challenge. Here's a look at the action as these teams attempted to break world records and make history. Here at Battle Mountain in Nevada, human-powered velomobile enthusiasts from around the world gather for one purpose. To build the best bike that's possible and to go as fast as possible. Go Francois! If you don't know what velomobiles are, think of them as high-tech bicycles enclosed in sleek shells to maximize aerodynamics. The wheels are covered so for less uh, wind resistance. And the electronic device here in the center, that's a camera system. Uh, that's uh, the monitors, the cameras up here. The sleek designs require riders to use camera systems to see their surroundings. The mo there, we have monitors. And that, those emit a little bit of light. Those emit a good amount of light. But other than that, you're not really looking at anything. Yeah. Evan and Isabella Morris, two teenagers representing Team Pillbug, even set a world record in their category. Since nobody has set the record for our category, what, basically whatever we set would be technically a record. Setting a world record isn't easy, and wind is a major factor. Six kilometers an hour. 
um, and that's in any direction. So it doesn't matter whether it's a headwind or a tailwind. If the wind is over that limit, your run, even if it's a world record speed, is not considered a world record. Not all velomobiles are practical in everyday life, such as the two-wheel streamliner. Well, the problem with the two wheels is if something happens and you have to come to a stop quickly, what can you do? You can't put your, your hands out or your feet out. You just fall over. <laughs> so if a crosswind comes, uh, it can blow you over. Now, in a racing situation, that might not be a problem because you just want to go as fast as you can and, and the conditions are going to be OK. However, the bike in back of me is called a velomobile. That's a three wheel bike, and it's actually very pra practical. I personally own one of those. I use it to go grocery shopping and to do other kinds of shopping. And I can also go 50 miles an hour on it. If you could break a world record or simply reach high speeds, you will also get a special gift. We offer uh, hats in five mile per hour increments. Starting at 50. Starting at 50 miles per hour. And uh, you'll see the guys walking around wearing their hats and the, they very proudly wear their speed hats. Dr. Calvin Mose, one of the volunteers from Toronto, got an 80 hat. Unlike all the other hats, the 80 hat has some nice decorations on it. <laughs> Calvin also shares with us the most important thing to reach high speeds. By far the biggest thing is aerodynamics. After aerodynamics, the next most important thing is probably the athlete. Uh, there's, uh, there's not a lot of top-notch athletes who come out for this event, uh, but it certainly makes a, a huge difference. The next most important thing would be the wheels. After that, it would be the rolling resistance, having the most efficient possible tires. Although it might be a little counterintuitive, a longer, slightly heavier bike can be more efficient than a lighter, shorter one. The length of the bike does matter, but only to the extent that it affects aerodynamics. If there's a very streamlined bike that's a bit longer, that's better than a, a less aerodynamic bike, even if it's shorter. Since nobody has gone over 90, is it possible to get a 90 hat? Certainly, I'd say it's possible. And in fact, um, one of my teammates reached 89.59 uh, 89 miles per hour. So just a tiny bit short of 90 miles per hour. And maybe, uh, maybe very soon somebody will pass that. The International Human Powered Vehicles Association has their world records posted on its website. If you think you can make a world record or even be the first to get a 90 hat, you can join the organization and bring your Velomobile to make an attempt every year in September. Helen Billings and Jimmy Ma, NTD News, Battle Mountain, Nevada. All right, before we go here, a quick mention of market stocks rally today to push the Dow Jones a record high. It's up 0.5% today. S&P 500 sitting just shy of all-time highs. Uh, up 0.1% today. NASDAQ uh, lagging uh, just a bit, down 0.5%. Uh, investors now looking forward to the Federal Reserve meeting later this week. All right, with that, all the things happening today on Business Matters. Uh, back to you guys. Thanks for that, Don. We'll see you tomorrow. Yep, see you back here.